and welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System. My name's Terry Ellis, I'm an audio reviewer and a Dirac Live calibrator. And in this video, it's part. It's a song demonstration as part of the review for the KEF R7 floor standard speakers to the side of me. Now, if this is the first video you've come to, I've already created several song demonstration videos as I've been working through the review, adding in different bits of kit, trying to work out how to get better sound from the R7 speakers, because right at the very start, I knew they was capable speakers. I think that's largely because I've spent a lot of time with the reference-free speakers. I could hear a lot of similarities with the R7s, just in terms of where they, how they were performing. I could just basically tell that they was capable, there was more there. It's just up to me, the audio file, to unlock that performance, which personally, I think that's a lot of the case with a lot of us. You know, it's a case of working out how we unlock the next level of performance. It's not always a case of just buying new speakers. It's a case of looking at everything in the system. And that's exactly what I've done. And in the, in the last video, I said, I'm sure I'll be able to stand up here in the next one and say, wow, I've cracked it. And that's exactly what I'm going to say. Wow, I've absolutely cracked it. But it's not been easy. I've been I've been working seriously hard. I mean, yesterday, I literally spent all day working on things. Right, take this out, put this in, testing, 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 take it out, put it in, test some more. Painful day, actually, because I've started to go backwards in sound quality before I went forwards. In this video, I want to speak more about what I've done and in the next song demonstration, I'll talk more about the system. And then in the last one or the last couple, I'll just do mostly music. So let me talk about what I've done. So if, if you're looking at things, you might notice some obvious differences, you might not. So the first thing I changed, I thought to myself, right, I want to change up to try and get more clarity, soundstage and space. So I replaced the Telerium Q Silver 2 speaker cables with the Telerium Q Silver Diamond speaker cable. So pretty much going from entry level silver range but they're far from entry level performance in the silver twos up to the top of the silver range the silver uh, telerium q silver diamond and after a little while because they'd been used for a while after a couple of hours of playback i could hear that there was things were getting things were improved but other things seemed worse now it wasn't a case of putting the silver diamonds in and the sound got worse far from it the silver diamonds are just a, a more wide open signal path i.e i could hear more of what was good and what was bad about everything that was coming before them. So, you know, I've been through this uh, stage before, so it's time to reassess what I'd done before, make sure I had things absolutely spot on and nailed on. And while you think about that, think about, pay attention to everything through, through what I'm gonna explain, think about the speakers, because the speakers need to have a very high resolving power to, to even be able to hear these things in the first place. So testament to the Kef R7s, because my estimations of them have been pretty good since the start, but it's gone up and up and up and up. And in a minute, you'll know why. So we're using the Accord Electronics Hugo TT2 at the moment as a DAC and a preamplifier. So that's obviously in for review. Now, recently, a couple of months ago, Accord Electronics released the Hugo M Scaler. Now, I've been to quite a few talks about the M Scaler. I've heard it play in other systems, but there's nothing like adding something to your own system or the system that you're familiar with listening to to properly assess what it's all about. So that is what I added into the chain after obviously changing the speaker cable. So here you can see the Accord Electronics Hugo M Scaler. Now, if you don't know what the M Scaler is, you know, I've done several videos talking about it before. I'll link the very first one up there and pretty soon I'll be posting up a full lecture from Rob Watts, obviously a designer of all cool electronic stack technology. So there'll be a full lecture on it soon that goes into the, the details of it uh, in quite some detail, but just to make it short and concise. Basically, as you go up the cord electronics DAC range, as you go up from the cutest now up to the Dave, part of what you get is more what's called tap length filters. Now, that's just one part, obviously, of a DAX design, but the more tap length filters you get, the more of a 1644 bit signal, i.e. a CD quality signal, actually gets resolved. So we get a cleaner and clearer transient as opposed to a more smoothed and rolled off transient and you'll notice that straight away as you go up from the cutest to the dave for example everything's sharper and crisper and more well defined and the dave has i think 164,000 tap length filters so we adding in the hugo m scaler takes the tap length filter up over the magic one million mark and in rob watts mathematical calculations it requires over a million tap length filters to properly I know how to explain it, but to properly realise a full 1644 
signal. So you think digital and CDs been around for what, 25, 30 years, maybe more, but it's only today, well, within the last couple of years, that the technology has been around to properly resolve a 1644 bit signal, which is quite amazing when you think about it. So that's just technical talk. What does it actually mean in terms of audio performance? Well, I don't want to talk too much about the Hugo Home Scaler in this video, but let's just say the video I made for it right at the start was that I called this another game changer from Cord Electronics. Now, I wasn't actually thinking performance terms. I was thinking price terms because this technology has been around for a few years in the Blue Mark II Scaler, but the Blue Mark II Scaler is designed to accompany the day. It costs about eight and a half thousand pounds. And obviously it's a CD transport and CD player and stuff as well. So that technology, it's the exact same technology, has now been put into the Hugo M Scaler at £3,700. It's less than half. So we're getting that massive technology, that really crucial, critical, massively advanced, the most advanced digital filter in existence for less than half the money. That is why I said it was a game changer. But I didn't realise... Actually, what sort of game changer it was going to be. But again, I'll talk about that more in the future. What that also does, that upscales a CD, uh, upscales CD files right up to 705 kilobytes per second, I think it is. So it's also upscaling the sound as well, which people are going to think, oh, upscaling, that's going to make things worse and stuff like that. <laughs> Trust me, it doesn't. Just wait, just, just wait. I've got a lot to demonstrate. So adding the Hugo M scaler into the system, again, brought about... <laughs> well a big improvement straight away but it's like one of those things it, this changed pretty much everything this made me reassess everything that i had been doing from a digital chain point of view so from our computer audio source feeding to the hugo m scaler because that is the first link in the chain you, you link from the hugo m scaler to the dac and it made me reassess things because it, it gave me much more improved clarity so i could again hear where things are good, where things are bad. And it's just a case of trying to work out where things are bad. It's not necessarily things are bad, sorry. Let me explain that better. It's just, I'm hearing improvements to the sound, but I'm also hearing what I would class as maybe the negative traits of the system's performance staying. So you think, well, why has part of it got better and part of it stayed the same? There must be a reason for that. This is what how basically how I fine tune, problem solve or whatever it is and work it out. And recently, when I was at Nintronics, I had a really long chat with Rob Watts about different ways of connecting things. And he was suggesting connecting to an M scaler via an optical cable as opposed to via a BNC SP diff cable, or obviously suggesting feeding USB into it, which is probably what 99% of people are going to do. So that's what I decided to do. I tried SP diff, I compared to optical. There was a difference there. And Rob Watts, if you see this video, you was right, I was wrong. Hold my hands up to that. So then I tried connecting USB to the Hugo M scaler which definitely, definitely, definitely changed the sound drastically from feeding via the other connections that I've done, but it wasn't all perfect. So I, again, I spent all day yesterday just trying to fine tune things, work things out, looking at settings in our audio PC. I've settled at this. <coughs> so I'm using USB straight about out of our audio PC. Now remember from the audio PC out, USB connection comes out of a JCAT Femto USB card. And that is getting powered by a JCAT 200 watt linear power supply down there. That's already a very low noise USB output from a computer. And that feed, that was feeding, as I say, straight to the Hugo M scaler. But I worked out through testing that if I used a JCAT USB isolator in the system, it just was that, it sounded just that bit better. Now I was getting a more well-defined bass and a clearer and cleaner sound stage, which again, I'm going to demonstrate through these song demonstrations. So at the moment, I'm still using the JCAT USB isolator. So that remains from the digital chain that I was using before. There's a couple of bits come out. And obviously now really we're trying to feed straight to the Hugo M scale as much as we can. Now there's potential. The reason the JCAT USB isolator might be beneficial in there at the moment could just be that it's a really cracking product and it helps to get noise down from the audio PC that much more. Or it could just be that was in the chain when I ran a Dirac Live calibration and done all, all the corrections because when you plug straight into the Hugo M scale, you seem to get more sound. Or you seem to get a more, maybe a more dynamic sound or a fuller sound. But when you get a fuller sound, that's wonderful as long as the clarity remains. Unfortunately, the clarity wasn't remaining. The bass seemed out of key and the sound stage sound, sounded compressed as opposed to open. That could just be, I've, I've run a direct live correction with a USB isolator in, which, which is maybe done things down a little bit, possibly, I don't know. All got to be tested. And at the moment, it's like, I don't, I don't want to touch it. It's sounding 
exquisite in here absolutely exquisite so that's what i've done so before um before when i knew i was going to get the uh hugo m scaler obviously normally when you buy the hugo m scaler it comes with two sp diff bnc cables to link between the m scaler and the hugo tt or the cutest or the dave but Obviously, this is a loan unit from Nintronics. I want to thank them, obviously, for loaning me the sample for review. I said to Nintronics, don't worry about giving me the BNC cables because I'm going to contact our friends over at Wave High Fidelity because so far, from my experience, they produce the best SP diff cables that I've used. And funny enough, someone else said the same thing to me the other day, that they, they thought they were the best cables for that one particular usage. So I contacted Wave High Fidelity and they sent me through a pair of BNC cables to connect the M scaler to the Hugo TT2, and it turned up, I didn't think nothing of it. I noticed that it was called the stream cables, and I just assumed that is what they were called when you bought two of them, as opposed to the single one they sent me before that I've been using, that's the Storm. It's only today, when I checked on their website, I thought I better you know, do a little bit of research and find out about the cables. I actually found out they are actually kind of like a tear down. So the Storm reference are Wave High Fidelity's best SP diff cables, obviously with a BNC connection. So the a uh, stream set pair of cables that the company is now you know, producing and that now just released are actually a more affordable range. They're actually about 60% of the cost of a pair of Storm Reference cables. And I obviously didn't know that until about 10 minutes before I made this video. So think of it like that. They're actually really great value for money. They are the BNC cables that I'm using and chose to use to link between a Hugo M scaler and the Hugo TT2. So they are really, that's been the main differences that I've made to the system. And I said, I don't want to talk about this section too much because there'll be reviews coming and I'm going to do lots of testing. I want to test it out with the uh, cutest and other things. But that really was a game changer for me and how I set things up and how I'm going to go forward with the system. How, how, basically how you get better sound because that is an amazing thing. Really an amazing thing. Right then, so it leads me on to the purpose of the video song demonstration. Now, the big thing about adding the Hugo M scaler and the big thing about having a valve amplifier and the big thing really when you're looking at speakers at around a 2,000, I suppose you're under 3,000 pounds, which is what these are, 2,700. Although I would budget 3,000 pounds for these and straight away buy a set of ISO acoustics Gaia speaker isolators and put them straight underneath it. I wouldn't even bother testing, just put them straight underneath because they'll be worth it. Obviously these at the moment, the R7s are straight on the floor, but I already know, I've already done the testing. The ISO acoustics Gaias are brilliant and they, they improve much more expensive and technically higher quality speakers than this. So they're gonna improve these exactly the same. Well, they improve the reference. They're gonna improve these. So anyway, I want, to, I want to do a lot of different songs, actually. I want to do some different types of music to put across just where, how well these are performing because they're performing exceptionally well in nearly every area, very, very nearly every area. And that's only me really being extremely fussy. They're giving me fantastic, fantastic resolution. They're giving me fantastic detail, soundstage space, clarity, focus, sweetness with detail and drive and musicality. That is all absolutely fantastic reference quality in fact fantastic now this system is as it is there's a couple of bits kind of missing but they're only missing because oh, i'm used to things for someone who wasn't used to it they'll come and sit in here and listen to these and think oh god these are these are ten thousand or twenty thousand pound speakers to a degree they really would because they're doing things well done because <laughs> well, it's well done kef they're doing some serious things so the purpose of this first one I'm going to play a few different songs, all from the one album. Now, I just found this album sort of stored on a music collection. I must have ripped it years ago. And it's a test disc. I think it's a Dali test disc. I don't even know. I've not got no metadata or anything. I just was flicking through. I was like, oh, I'll have a listen. It's got some outstanding kind of audio file type music. But they sound outstanding now because of the M scale and what that does and what it does to space and an extra bit. So have a listen. I'm going to play several different bits of music. And the reason I'm going to play several different bits is because there's a chance one, either or all of them maybe, might not make it through the YouTube copyright laws and stuff. So I'm hoping one, either or all of them do. And if not, I'll just use some short sections and then put it together. And then I'll go back to my usual types of music that always gets through. So let's have a listen to this and I'll come back and talk after. I know there's a lot of chat. I'm just going to check the volume to see where we are. Perfect. Right then, have a listen. Talk to you soon. There we go.
there what do you think now it depends on how much of that music comes through and works its way through as i say what do you think 
<laughs> it's incredible, really, when you think that level of refinement, clarity, resolution, space, detail, dynamics as the music comes through. It's all coming off of speakers that cost under three grand, under three grand, that look really lovely as well. Now, now I didn't get this sound straight away. I've had to work my ass off to get this sound out of these speakers. And, and that sounds really a coy, I shouldn't have sworn. I apologize, but you know, it's not been easy. It's not come clean. It's not come easy. It's not been easy. It's not come free. You know, to really work at it. Obviously, I've got some seriously high quality bits in here. You know, we're talking, you know, maybe a seven and a half thousand pound amplifier. We've got about an eight thousand pound plus cables, a nine thousand pound kind of DAC set up. We've got thousands tied up in a source. We've got thousands in cables and mains conditioning and all sorts. But the end result is a sound that's it's not perfect, but it's a damn impressive from a set of speakers that are, that are kind of middling price. I'm not trying to be coy, but when you think you've got the reference, which is reference speakers, which are kind of six, seven thousand, that's twice the money of these, and the blades go twice again. So these are middling in terms of the level of in care, from, and probably lower to middling for the industry as a whole. There's loads of speakers out there in the twenty and thirty and forty and fifty thousand pound price range. So. When you think we're getting that level of refinement, detail, clarity, and just sweetness from Kef R series speakers, not the reference from Kef R series, that's damn, damn, damn impressive. Damn impressive. And before it was sounding kind of warm and sweet, and it was a really lovely thing to listen to, really musical. Now, all the work I've put in is to make sure that I kept that sweetness and kept that musicality and kept the magic coming off the MC Macintosh MC275 valve amplifier because when I started making changes initially I was getting a, a bigger sound but it lost its clarity or I was getting a colder sound that was kind of becoming analytical and it lost that musicality so I had to work really hard to get a balance of absolutely everything and that that really those songs that you've just heard there are really just kind of a you know very hi-fi aren't they they're very um kind of hi-fi flavor jazzy sort of things but it's not it's not necessarily about that if you think about the classical piece that I've just played. There's a real character and bite to the instruments that are being played, but there's a, just masses of clarity and insight. You get an insight into the instrument that's being played. And then the song of the first song uses a demonstration. There are some big instruments in there. That are like kind of so much going on in that first track. What a test track! Wow, I was absolutely blown away the first time I heard that. It's like just each instrument's just got so much character, and it's got like an old fashionedness to it, isn't it? That first song, all that's really all these types of music. Now we're going to go from that across the song demonstrations. We're going to go for all different types of music. I'm going to demonstrate so much to you because I'm so proud of the fact that I've got this system to this level, and I'm so proud of Kef Engineers for bringing out this. Oh my God! There's going to be so many happy audio files that can buy these speakers and then work on their systems over time to get the sound quality up to this sort of level. But some of you probably go way above this as well. So it's an interesting one. I do feel like I'm probably at a plateau with where I am. I personally feel like everything here can probably scale up quite a bit. But either way, I'm sure some of you probably get better sound out of them than I have. But if you do, even if you don't, if you get close, you're going to be seriously happy with that sort of level of investment. So that is the first song demonstration of several that I'm going to do. And that's kind of going to conclude the review for the Kef R7s with the final review, like the conclusion for it. So I'm absolutely buzzing with what I've achieved sound quality wise from these. Um, and yeah, I'm going to bring some more to it. So I hope you enjoyed this one. There'll be links to the music below the videos I always do. Obviously, a big thanks to Neutronics for loaning me a lot of these samples that I've got in here for review. It makes all the difference. You know, had I, did, had I not had my hands on a Hugo M scaler, I would never been able to achieve this level of sound is really what it boils down to. And it's just experience. I'm going to use the word skill, working out how to best incorporate this into the system that I've got here. Other people might want to use it differently. Obviously, I've got our usual isolators underneath and on the top. Part of that is just to help add a bit of weight because they're obviously the uh, wave high fidelity uh, stream cables are really heavy. So just want to make sure nothing's moving around. And I honestly think kind of the more isolated each product can be, the better anyway. So I've got those obviously scattered about. And yeah, the next video, I'll talk more about the system. So this has been a really long one. It's just really just warming you up for the magic that's coming and the sound is near at the moment is borderline magical. So hope you've enjoyed this one. Go and visit the website if you haven't recently. Leave us a like if you enjoyed it and uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I'll see you soon. Take care.